Well, let's welcome in uh, Anand Shah. He's a market master today, head PM is AIF Investments at ICC Pro. Anand, great to have you with us here. Thank you for your time. Uh, so actually, let's just start with pharma uh, to begin our conversation. Uh, do you like the space? Do you like the local uh, sort of uh, domestic formulation makers? Do you like the uh, U.S. generic makers? Uh, what in that space and uh, you know, on an absolute return basis, what do you think, where do you think uh, maximum upsides lie? Hi, hi. Very good morning uh, and happy to be here on CNBC. Thank you for having me. I think uh, pharma is, uh, has done extremely well and it always remains tricky. So, so Within, within the fund house, we actually take more bottom-up view because each pharma company is very, very different. Uh, so to give actually a view on a pharma sector uh, would be misleading in that sense. Uh, but nevertheless, the fact remains that uh, there are some blockbuster products uh, which will keep uh, the interest in the sector very high. Uh, from the very low, comp very high competition in U.S. generics, the competition is receding, uh, the pricing power is improving. So that's also on the margin, helping the pharma companies. Uh, domestic has been always great. So I think we always uh, look at a stability of earnings and that stability earnings actually is coming from India uh, branded generics market, uh, which is providing you a reasonable platform on which you can reinvest the monies into US generics markets and build the newer parts of the business. Okay. What about the market overall? Uh, how are you feeling about it, Anand? Uh, because, you know, we are in a stage where things could go either way. There is a one camp that believes that a correction is coming. But uh, do you think that it could just be a time-wise correction, if anything? And what's the best way to approach it? It can be anybody's guess, but I think a large part of the market is actually waiting for correction. Uh, it's been a very, very strong... Uh, a move in the market over the last three years and with very little uh, strong corrections, if you ask me, or a deep corrections. And, and that's actually uh, keeping a lot of long-term investors uh, on the edge. They, this, they want to enter the India growth story, uh, but they're waiting for the correction, which is sort of not there. So if you ask me, uh, we, we would believe it will be very healthy if market actually corrects uh, uh, a little long periods of time, we, and this momentum is actually, uh, you know, leading to uh, frothy areas. Also, there are pockets of the market which actually we don't like now anymore. So uh, it's a it's a even Stevens market's risk reward has uh, significantly reduced. Uh, risks have increased. The upside has reduced uh, in in that sense, and to that extent, uh, some bit of a correction should be. Uh, really good for the long-term health of them. Okay, hi Anand, good morning and good to see you in. Uh, you know, the path that it's got a little too frothy, I think, was the broader markets because you came in there, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis and you just saw stocks flying off the shelf. Uh, as of now, what would the positioning be? Would it be more towards the larger cap names which have some valuation comfort or would it be uh, more towards, uh, you know, still you believe there is still potential out there. By the way, we're having visuals coming of the RBI governor in just a bit. He'll be addressing the press as well. But Anand, tell us your view. So large cap is fairly researched and to that extent, the fraudiness, uh, if any, was there three years back. Uh, that's also reduced significantly, especially in the consumer-facing businesses. But yeah, there are pockets of fraudiness now. All of a sudden, the B2B uh, capital goods is, is some areas where people are factoring in a lot of growth for many years to come. And it being inherently a cyclical business uh, would have uh, ups and downs. And to that extent, uh, those are pockets. But as you rightly said, yes, the frothiness in overall large cap would always be lesser given there is institutional participation and there is a very uh, wide range of research that happens on those companies. I think what we are seeing, emergence of you know, spots of the market where can be very, very dangerous for retail investors are in the micro caps and the small caps where, again, uh, it's it's not per se that all the mid caps and small caps would be not investable, uh, but there would be pockets which would be very expensive and then pockets which would be worth investing even. Okay. Uh, so in terms of uh, sectors, right, um, which are the spaces where you think that there could be a little more valuation headroom, but there's growth as well. After seeing this kind, this earning season, uh, what are the spaces that you continue to be bullish on? 
So banks, banks uh, stand out in terms of uh, valuation comfort, not that they are cheap, cheap the way they were three years back, but nevertheless, uh, we have seen significant improvement in profitability, significant improvement in, uh, you know, uh, cross NPS and net NPS at an all-time low sort of a thing. And that gives me a lot of comfort uh, that uh, the profitability will remain resilient for a while. And in that context, uh, we, we would want to believe that banks actually still offers uh, a reasonably good risk reward. Outside that, I think uh, uh, the consumer-facing businesses were very expensive three years back. They still remain expensive given the growth is an issue there. Uh, select manufacturing have also become very expensive, but then within that we like metals as a space or a textiles as a space where uh, the valuation comfort is still there because uh, they, they have not joined the party of uh, the manufacturing given the China slowdown is there. Uh, and overall, the developed market, we, we spoke about that. The export-oriented manufacturing is still under some pressure given there is a slowdown in US, Europe, and China. All the large economies are not yet back, and that provides an opportunity into the future. But today, as we speak, uh, remains a headwind for many export-oriented manufacturing. So those are the areas where, again, uh, there is comfort of valuation. That is something which we still like. All right, Anand, let's uh, dwell a little bit more into this metal scene that you're talking about. Because I'm looking at a contra fund. You have uh, you know, exposure to the fairest, the non-fairest space, Vedantas in the portfolio, which is looking very good at current valuations. The only risk is that the prices collapse. Similarly, you have JSPL that's already seen a big re-rating, but it seems the management is getting their house in order. What's the preference currently between ferris as well as uh, non-ferris? And the good part is the balance sheets are in very good shape. But there are risks because of what's happening in China. Tell us more. Indeed, I think you covered it very well. This is both bottom-up and top-down story. And a more interesting part is that since uh, decades, since 2008, uh, we had a very, very difficult times in sector. Uh, the companies were leveraged, and, and that led to significant risks to the equity shareholders. Now that has turned, uh, the debt has uh, reduced significantly. Uh, the cost competitiveness of the Indian metal manufacturing in general, be it ferrous or non-ferrous, has increased since then. They have focused a lot more uh, on, on becoming more cost competitive, be it backward integrating into uh, you know, raw material or even for that matter, energy like coal and other places. So uh, all the companies have become more cost competitive. So that's a good bottom-up story. The top-down part of that is still uh, not there. I think China is one of the largest consumer as well as largest producer of metals. And uh, that's a challenge part today as we speak uh, because their consumption has slowed down on the back of the real estate uh, market being subdued and, and general consumption is very subdued. Uh, but the manufacturing still continues uh, and, and that puts a lot of pressure as, as they export a lot more than what they used to export in the past. And that's why, uh, as I said, that stocks are reasonably priced because the good times are not yet this sector. My our take is that uh, China being, uh, you know, moving towards more prosperity, as it becomes more prosperous, will be more conscious of pollution, will be more conscious of uh, their their inability to continue to produce metal at a at a low cost. So that right. cost comp should reduce and that should make more of the metal prices. Mm. Anand, uh, <clears throat> you know, we can't talk, about, uh, you won't be able to talk about Ola tomorrow, but you can talk about it today. <laughs> tomorrow it'll be listed. Uh, I don't know if you can't talk about it or the prospects therein. A any thoughts, Anand? No, I think, uh, look, the autos in general, we've been underweight for the simple reason that uh, in India, uh, the auto companies have uh, very strong positions in their individual segment and that made sure that they have a very large market share and a very high profitability compared to what you see in global markets. So in India, there are two challenges in the auto industry. One, they're making too much money uh, given they have a dominant position in those segments and the investors also overpay for that because they, they see that dominant share. So they have a strong earnings as well as a higher PE multiple in the sector in general. It's not yesterday. It's been the case for more than a decade. What is changing in auto sector is the emergence of competition. Uh, in, in passenger vehicles, you move from uh, the entry-level cars have now moved to SUV where there is more balance and there is more competition in that segment. So overall, 
volatility of market share and profitability based. Mm. Similarly, in two-wheelers, we'll see more players emerging. Uh, uh, EVs will uh, take some shares. Scooters came in with, and that's making the ma market more fragmented, which is not a good news for the shareholders in general. Okay, we'll leave it at that, Anand. Thanks a lot for joining and appreciate your time here on CNBC TV 18. That's the word coming in on the market. But